and welcome back to part one of a very special two-part Watchman series from Washington, D.C. Now, one of the great pro-Israel advocates for years in this city has been Shelley Nice, whether working for the Jerusalem Connection or living, studying in Israel, Shelley has been at the forefront of advocating for Israel right here in the nation's capital. One of her main passions is the hunt for the Copper Scroll. What is the Copper Scroll? Well, Shelley has written a great new book called The Copper Scroll Project, which outlines this ancient and elusive biblical relic and what it could reveal about the Bible and God's plan for his land. Take a look. The Copper Scroll is rare in that it was found by an archaeological team sponsored by the Jordanian Department of Antiquities. So it wasn't found just by, by roving Bedouins. Archaeologists and Bedouin, after those first Dead Sea Scrolls were proven authentic, it was, a, it was a hunt for who could find them the quickest. The Bedouin usually won that race. In the Dead Sea area, caves pocket the limestone cliffs around it and a lot of them the entrances have collapsed during antiquity and they're very hard to see just by the scanning eye but they were able to find this cave and they go inside and they were very disappointed because there was 40 dead sea scroll jars in cave number three but the the ceiling of the cave had collapsed during antiquity so almost every scroll was in dis a disintegrated state but then on the very last day day number 11 of them excavating cave number three in the very last hours they come across what looks like a false wall almost a false wall of a secret castle chamber but it was a limestone wall and they chipped through it and what they see is these two copper rolls resting on a man-made shelf behind it. So the copper scroll had actually been protected. Nature had created the perfect hiding spot. And you know, there's a lot of debate about whether or not the Dead Sea Scrolls were deposited on the run, whether Jewish refugees fleeing Roman persecution deposited their scrolls from Jerusalem in the caves and thought they would come back and retrieve them one day. What the Copper Scroll was very unique and that it was obviously not deposited on the run. It was on a man-made shelf. It was strategically hidden. Now, after 2000 years, copper did what copper does and it was green and it was brittle and it crumbled at the slightest touch. So they put it in a museum in Jordan and no one could figure out how to open it for three years. So what the Copper Scroll is, it's written out in 12 columns. It's a verbal treasure map, 12 columns, over 60 plus locations. And, and there's a certain style that it's writing. It always tells you it's very, it's a dry inventory. It's basically verbless, but every, all of the 60 plus locations, it's telling you where to go, how deep to dig and what you'll find once you do dig. The amount of treasure that is listed in the Copper Scroll, if talent in first century Jerusalem is equivalent to about 74 pounds. The amount of talents that are referred to in terms of buried treasure in the Copper Scroll would be the equivalent of 168 tons today. Copious amounts of gold, silver, and treasure. It also, the Copper Scroll uses words like sacred, tithe, vessels. It never uses words that we know would be outright references to temple furniture. It doesn't say Ark of the Covenant. It doesn't say table of showbread or altar of incense. However, in one part, it does say priestly vestments. It'll say sacred vessels. So between knowing how much treasure the Copper Scroll is referring to and these certain keywords that refer to sacred vessels or priestly vestments, almost all scholars agree that the Copper Scroll was connected to the temple. And in fact, the Copper Scroll, what makes it so unique is, is that not only is it a verbal treasure map, but it's the only one of the Dead Sea Scrolls in the Dead Sea Scroll collection that's written on metal and not papyrus or leather. In fact, there's nothing like it in all of antiquity, except for there was another Copper Scroll connected to Ramses II, and it also was an inventory of temple treasure. But inside Israel, the Copper Scroll is very unique into itself, and we don't have anything else like it. 
Archaeology is a weapon for truth in Israel. Archaeology is how you show who has provenance in the land. And so if we could find something that could connect the Jewish history to Israel's modern dilemmas. This is how Israel's ancient past is tethered to her present. And that can be done through archeology span and nothing more so than the Copper Scroll. When I read the Copper Scroll, what I see it pointing to is that this is Israel's birthright. And Jim Barfield wants, and I want to be a part of returning that to Israel. Coming up, my final thoughts from here in Washington, D.C. on how Christians United for Israel, KUFI, is fighting back against the rise of anti-Semitism around the world and in your backyard, and how you can play a major role in helping us. Stick around.